we're at our eco village and we're on 25 acres in Shawnigan Lake on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. We're a park, we're a farm, we're a school, we're a residential village. I'm one of the original founders and this is my family's home. So it's a great example of total hybridizing of design, construction methods, and people's way of seeing what is a house. So we created this house over a series of years. And so Freya's house actually is created with a central timber frame, but the wood itself comes from salvaged materials from windfalls that were rescued off of the clear cuts. The north side of the building is actually straw bale. It's a French straw bale method. The southeast of this building is cob, and so it's that clay and sand and straw construction, but it's thermal mass. And anywhere we can possibly get some passive solar gain, we're putting the thermal mass. The west side of the building is wood chip clay. We call it chip and slip often. Down the middle of the building, and kind of as a feature to the building, is a rammed earth wall. The floors are either cob or natural stone, and they have radiant in-floor heat in them, and it goes up into built things like this bench we're sitting on. There is also all natural plaster within the building. Sometimes we'll salvage drywall if it doesn't have asbestos in it and create a wall system as long as it's truly salvaged and we're diverting it from the landfill. One of our ethics here at our Eco Village is we said we would not use money to solve problems. So we're not looking to um, buy the highest priced item to make the most beauty. We're looking to salvage and divert things from the landfill that we can repurpose into a space. And we're looking at as much as possible unprocessed, low footprint materials, clay and sand and stone and straw. So we're bringing all those elements together into really intelligent design and what we call living building design. So 1,200-ish square feet in cob construction. You're getting a lot of round walls. It's pretty hard to calculate anything square. We have really big roof overhangs. Um, we're looking at a good hat and good boots when we're building these kind of buildings. We're in the West Coast. We get a lot of rain. Uh, we want to protect these buildings for our children's children's children. So that's kind of the protective space around the building, but it also makes it seem quite a bit bigger. It's very patterned and artful. This specifically was to take as much repurposed material and turn it into art as possible as well. At our Eco Village, we have the kind of on-grid space, which is much more kind of commercial scale size. Up in our housing cluster with the nine homes that are separated um, by our agricultural area, we're trying to be off-grid, producing as much as we can and treating as much as we can in situ. So having composting toilets, um, separating out our gray water, so you have light gray and dark gray water, depending. Some of the buildings split those, some of them combine them. So it's actually a resource that is used for irrigation and micronutrients. We're looking at really low levels of water consumption and the systems on the buildings are inherently interconnected with everything about the built environment. A building doesn't stand alone. In village design, we're not creating a house. We're creating a whole systems theory applied. Call it permaculture design, call it eco-village design, call it systems theory design, but you're looking for that holistic picture of everything being interconnected. One of the really notable things about Freya's house is the front door. This is actually a uh, spalted maple. And we had a tree that came down. We were gonna chop it up for firewood, but you can see it looks like a little child drew on it with a felt pen. This door is very thick and I designed a window to go into it that was custom made. But this, we just make it on site. Everybody contributes a lot of beauty 
everybody has their own aesthetic, but this wood is literally right from the land. This is a three bedroom house out of the 1200 square feet. The doors and all the wood and everything that is all just handcrafted in the space. This is a bit of a darker room, but come on in. So this is a double tub. And this bathroom is overly large, so the tub kind of fit here. And in permaculture design, we say the problem is the solution. If you're gonna have that much water, it's not really a problem, it's actually a solution of how you're watering all your food forest and your fruit trees. And so we've landed the tub into a corner area here and then surrounded it with Tadillac. So Tadillac is limestone on the wall and we've polished this for 24 hours into place. A lot of this stonework and all of this mosaic work, we will pull off sample tile boards and strip for hours and hours and hours all these beautiful colors to get just that kind of exquisite work. We have mosaic in every building. Every place becomes an art piece. The beauty of that is we're also, again, putting waste to resource. This is a composting toilet. Very simply, in 2016, a number of the folks who worked and taught here at our eco-village came together and took on the Ministry of Health protocols for waste streams, including gray and black water, wastewater systems, and composting toilets becoming legal, I believe codified in 2016. And so that makes things like composting toilets seem very simple now, legally into our houses. That's not true across Canada. And that's been a long journey and a lot of work. So this is kind of exciting now that you can actually have low tech technology in your home. There's a clean out out the back, very simple system. You have shavings that cover, so you know, you're not having odor, these kind of things. There's a whole moldering system, way of composting that is healthy and safe, which is why we work within the regulations all the time. It's not to constrain ourselves. I think regulations were really made to, for health and safety. We just have to figure out the greenest way to create health and safety, um, which is fairly simple with human manure. And so that compost waste stream goes not to our veggie gardens or anything, but it does go to perennial food crops um, and soil building. I like really dark and earthy spaces. So some places are bright and open. Skylights always help with that. Again, a little bit more of this incredible spalted maple that is our fridge. And so if you put a cob wall on a north side of a building, you're also going to have the ability to put low ventilation and a high release on that. The cold air will drop, it'll come into the space and it'll ventilate itself. It'll actually create a little bit of movement. This is a straw clay wall that's about eight inches thick. So it's super insulated and the door is super insulated. It looks like an art piece, but it's actually a fridge door as well. And then you can have a really small fridge for a whole family. If some people I know didn't have an ice cream addiction, this probably wouldn't even have a freezer on it. It's probably one of the largest sucking energy elements in this whole house. Back to more of the spalted maple, build your own cupboards. The thing about building with round and building with crafted walls, you now have to fit your cabinets into that. But off-grid propane cooking, this is an off-grid system, so we're not using electric. You wouldn't do that with solar panels. So you really have to think through your design and your consumption. We build small tea kitchens into our homes. This is a three-bedroom house, so this seems very small to people. But we also have a whole eatery, a zero-mile eatery on site. We have all our food storage, a lot more of our cooking, um, all down in the main area. And we also have laundry down there. So all of the major energy needing things can be put into common spaces. And then our homes can have very low footprints as well. Again, this is all um, recycled materials. You know, if you got a, a, a set of French doors, actually that's two sets of French doors. You might as well paint them purple. Um, but it marks the way into this southeast facing greenhouse open these doors 
And what you're gonna get at this time of year is just an incredible amount of extra free heat into the room. And it's been chilly lately. So this is a way to just do a low tech solution to not really needing to use a, a wood stove or heat up your thermal mass, which takes 24 hours or more. Um, a fun part of this greenhouse, if you build it part way up to your second story, you can put solar chimneys or access for that hot air that's rising to actually go up into your second story as well. Wood chip clay on the west wall, back to rammed earth. Um, it's a very different process of natural building because it uses a lot of machine uh, form work. It's fairly loud, but it has a beautiful result, admittedly. This is pinned to the timber frame, so I think we put 3% cement into the mix and we didn't put rebar. Typically, the engineering on uh, rammed earth is quite high. This is a fun feature where I designed crafted sidewalls that actually key into the main wall. This kind of contains the heat here, but if you can have a warm thermal mass in the center of your home, it's a little bit like a battery in the middle and it's kind of storage. Um, and then we go upstairs, again, more of that maple that's cut for the stairway. This will eventually have a mosaic that runs down the front face of the stairs. All natural plaster. You can really get some highlighting colors in the spaces um, within the design. You can use bright colors or, or strong colors to make your timber frame or the wood pop. This is just such a gift to have this level of kind of timber frame where you can infill. It's kind of like the quintessential um, point of bringing together the timber frame with cob or earthen construction at the same time. And we actually pulled the frame inside the building. Um, this is Freya's room. And you can make these really vibrant greens and colors that pop and bring the light to it. The wood just brings so much more. It's, it's so much more than just a frame. It's actually a lot part of the aesthetic and being with that natural material. There's a deck out here. I can watch the food forest and see what's going on all around, what's growing. And I'm in an earthen building at the same time. So suddenly the ecosystem of our life becomes very real in these kind of buildings. This is actually a foundation that was created on a 12 by 12 ring beam. The excavated materials were turned around and put into tamped earth bag foundation. You can see the wall sits a little bit proud on the foundation. That stone work was done over four months of hand cutting every single stone with an Irish stone crafter. And the back of the building, where you want your best insulation, is French straw bale. Again, the front of the building is cob, clay and sand and straw. So this was often done with workshops and all of the wood on this building is hand milled on site. The windows are all hand built and out back we have a food forest. So all of our wastewater is actually able to go off and um, irrigate within that food forest. One of the arguably most challenging things about our eco-village is we did put all of our energy into the commons. So we left our homes till the end and we concentrated on common space buildings and systems. You know, if you ask me what, what would you do over about our eco-village, I know it's needed to be the way that it is, but I wonder if we would have focused on our homes first made sense right off the bat to be a non-profit society so my house isn't going to escalate into the same dollar value as out on the street. Um, the land can't be a commodity that's bought and sold in real estate terms. But it was really meant to be, I'm not here for personal gain, I'm here to bring more all the time and in regenerative design we're usually trying to put back five times more than we receive. Usually when you're a homeowner builder, you put your last name on your permit application 
and instead we put our daughter's name on the building permit and mostly because the idea of building for our children's children's children in seven generations we're not really just building for ourselves we're building for our kids and hopefully there will be many generations that live here over the years subscribe to exploring alternatives and please share this video if you liked it you can also find out more about our eco village on their website and on facebook thanks for watching